Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. You are welcome to yet another edition of our regular online class organized by Islamic College of Shogo. This is Chemistry SS2. During the last class, we started discussion on nitrogen. Today, we will go ahead and look at one of the compounds of nitrogen, and that is ammonia. Ammon we are going to look at ammonia under the following headings. Introduction, occurrence, laboratory preparation, induction, preparation, physical properties, chemical properties, ammonia solution, use of ammonia and ammonia solution, ammonium compounds, use of ammonium salts. Let's move. Introduction. Ammonia is usually found as impurity in the atmosphere. It is made up of one, nit one nitrogen atom covalently joined to three hydrogen atoms. And since nitrogen is highly electronegative compared to hydrogen, the compound formed, even though it is covalent, is polar. And the molecule, ammonia molecule, is also a hydrogen bond. It's also, it's also a hydrogen bonded molecule. That is, the, um, one ammonia molecule can bond with another ammonia molecule by hydrogen bond. One ammonia molecule can also bond with one with a, with a water molecule by hydrogen bond. And therefore, ammonia is highly soluble in water. If you remember, one of the effects of hydrogen bonding is high solubility in water. Occurrence, like we have said, ammonia occurs in the atmosphere as an impurity. It's also formed when organic, com organic uh, molecules, or organic, organic compounds are bonds, like organic, like uh, remains of organic matter, like the hair of animals, the feathers of birds, and other matter like that from living organisms when they are born in limited well when they are born in limited supply of oxygen ammonia is usually formed these are some of the ways by which ammonia occur naturally now laboratory preparation the common method by which the ammonia is prepared in laboratory is by Eating a mixture of an ammonium salt with an alkali. So anytime a compound is heated with an alkali, an ammonia gas is liberated. Know that that compound or that substance, that or no substance, is actually an ammonium salt. And it's often used in qualitative analysis. When you are asked to add a few drops of sodium hydroxide solution, to a sample and eat. So when you eat and ammonia gas is liberated, it shows that the sample, the test the sample that you are testing is actually what? An ammonium salt. And that shows that the ion, the positive ion present in that sample is ammonium ion. So you have to take note of that. Now, how is the preparation carried out? The preparation carried out is carried out using the following setup. We have a flask. Note that this flask is held in a slanting form. It's held in a slanting form and not vertically upward. Because if it, because during the reaction, when an ammonium salt reacts with the base, the, the substances formed include water. Ammonia gas is liberated into a You have calcium, hemolysis, then you have water. So one of the compounds from this water, when water is formed in such a manner, and the water is, when the water reaches the top of the flask, it gets condensed. If cold water should come back into the flask that is being heated, you know, from your knowledge of expansivity, 
there will be an equal expansion between the external part of the flask and the internal part of the flask. And what will happen? What are what follows? The flask shatters. Therefore, in order to drive away the water that is formed, the, the flask is held in a slanting manner so that the water will also come out of the flask. So you have to take note of that. So, and the question can be asked. So you should be able to answer the question. Now, the, there are some things you have to note in this reaction, in this preparation. One, the most commonly used alkali or base that is used is called calcium hydroxide because it is readily available and it is less expensive compared to other alkalis. Two, during the reaction, the flask is held in a slanted manner, as we have said before, due to the reason as explained. Number three is that the gas is brought from through a delivery tube into the dry tower. Which contains the dry agent quick lime, calcium hydroxide. The common dry agents that we know. Concentrated tetra oxysulfate, cis acid, phosphorus, 5 oxide, and fused calcium chloride cannot be used in dry ammonia because they all react with ammonia. So, if you, are, if you put any of them as dry agent, instead of drying the ammonia, they will react with the ammonia and form a new compound. So, they are not used in dry ammonia. So, you have to take note of this points and the points some of them are obvious in the diagram the next one is a laboratory preparation of ammonia how is ammonia prepared in laboratory and i don't think i need to sweat much on this since we have talked about it severally ammonia is prepared in the industry by harbor process which involves direct addition of nitrogen and hydrogen one Part of nitrogen to three parts of hydrogen are mixed together in modes and passed over finely divided ion catalyst. For industrial purpose, the since the reaction is highly exothermic in the in the fourth in the fourth process, so low temperature favors the yield of uh, ammonia, but as a student of chemistry, you know that the lower the temperature, the slower the reaction. So even though we want to get much, as much heat as, of ammonia as possible, we sh that does not mean that we should let this reaction go too slowly. So for the industrial purpose, 450 degrees Celsius is used as temperature. And then the pressure is kept at between 200 atmosphere and 250 atmosphere. Even though high pressure favors the use of ammonia, but the high pressure, high pressure, too much pressure will not allow the plants to last. So the industrialist will have to use his own senses too. So the, the pressure is kept at 200 degrees Celsius, between 200 degrees Celsius and 250 degrees Celsius. So that is that about the industrial preparation. Now coming to the physical properties, ammonia gas is a colorless gas. A colorless gas. I will, I will, I will soon show you ammonia gas issued out, out from a bottle now. It's a colorless gas. It has its characteristic choking smell. It is highly soluble in water. In fact, it is used in fountain experiments. One thing experiment will also be demonstrated in Shalai this class in the future, in the highest future. And it is used to demonstrate, Fontaine experiment is used to demonstrate solubility of gases. And gases that are used in Fontaine experiment are gases that are very soluble, highly soluble in water. And ammonia is one of such gases. And why is it highly soluble water? Soluble water, it is due to the presence of a hydrogen bond between the molecules. Ammonia gas turns dark red, date, most of the time, blue. In fact, that is 
about the only gas that is known to have that characteristic. So once a gas turns damp blood, uh, red is paper blue, we can have high assurance that it is most likely ammonia. And like we have said, it is lighter than air. And that's why it is collected in our poor delivery. I think you, you, you can easily determine its relative, relative molecular mass. You will discover that its relative molecular mass is 17. Far less than relative molecular mass of air. So it has the relative density is very low. And that will be 8.5. So it is lighter than here, and so it is collected by upward delivery. Because it is highly soluble water, it cannot be, it cannot be collected over water. Now, coming to ammonia, we can come to the chemical properties of ammonia. One of the most common chemical properties we are going to talk about is because it's highly soluble in water, it reacts with water to form ammonium ammonia solution which is mostly regarded as ammonium hydroxide. This solution is basic. It has all the properties of basis. Also, Ammonia is a reducing agent. So it has all the properties of reducing agents, decolorizing, acidified, potassium, tetra, oxo, manganese, seven. Turning, acidified, potassium, ether, oxo, dichromate, six, from orange to green. Turning, ion, ferric chloride, from brown to green. These are typical ways of uh, identifying reducing agents in the laboratory, and ammonia is capable of carrying, doing that. Apart from that, it also reacts with copper two oxide to deposit copper. This copper two oxide, in presence of ammonia, copper is deposited. And that is, this is one of the methods of preparing nitrogen in the laboratory that you have looked at in the past. So if this is two, this is three, this is this is three, this is three, I think that is balanced. Apart from that, it reacts with chlorine as well to reduce chlorine to hydrogen chloride. Remember, when hydrogen is added to a compound, it is reduction. If ammonia is in excess in this reaction, the remaining ammonia will react with the chlorine, hydrogen chloride form and form ammonium chloride. Therefore, if you have ammonia in excess, this is also a typical question. If ammonia if, if, if ammonia is made to react with chlorine, what will, what will be observed? Hydrogen chloride will be formed. When we, when we start talking about properties of hydrogen chloride, you understand the physical properties of hydrogen. That hydrogen chloride is a gas that has choking smell and fumes a moist air. So a gas that has choking smell and fumes a moist, a moist air is formed. But the question may be turned another way that if you have excess ammonia is made to react with chlorine. So if the word excess is there, it is not hydrogen chloride that gas that will be formed, but it will be ammonium chloride. And that means and that is a dense white fume is formed. Ammonium chloride is actually dense white 
fumes. So that's why fumes is observed, was observed. So that is if ammonia is in excess. But if ammonia is not in excess, hydrogen chloride gas is uh, formed. And this reaction is a form of reduction, reducing chlorine to hydrogen chloride. So these are some of the chemical properties of uh, ammonia that are brought to you today. And that will take us to test for ammonia. Test for ammonia gas. This reaction is used to test ammonia gas. When ammonia gas comes in contact with hydrogen chloride gas, dense white film is formed. And that confirms that the gas is a ammonia. The gas that is issuing out from here is ammonia gas. The gas that is issuing out from here is hydrogen chloride gas. If the two gas comes in contact, you can see. You can see dense white fumes. You can see the fumes. Can you see dense white fumes? So this is the dense white fumes is as a lot of ammonia gas coming in contact with a hydrogen chloride gas. And that's that dense white film is ammonium chloride. So it is the test is used to to uh, detect whether the gas is ammonia or not. It can either be used as test for ammonia or test for hydrogen chloride gas. So that is test for ammonia gas. Now, ammonia solution. Ammonia solution is formed when ammonia is dissolved in water. Whenever we dissolve ammonia in water, what we get is ammonia solution. And that is NH4OH that we have on the that we have written in the past. That's NH3 plus H2 to form NH4OH. OH. And it's also called ammonia ammonium hydroxide. Ammonium hydroxide solution or ammonia solution. One thing about ammonia solution is that if we bubble carbon dioxide into the solution, we get another a salt. Since ammonia solution is a base, and carbon dioxide is an acid. So a reaction between an acid and a base will form salt and water only. So bubbling carbon uh, dioxide into the ammonia solution, we have something like this. We are going to have ammonium triosocarbonate 4. So this is a typical neutralization reaction. Now, uses of ammonia and ammonia solution. That is the next thing to talk about. One, ammonia is used as a refrigerant. Remember, we also said nitrogen is used as a refrigerant. So if you have a question, we have that you are asked to state, name two gases that can be used as refrigerants. You have known two now. Nitrogen and uh, ammonia. And why is it used? Because it is easily liquefied. It can easily be liquefied. It can easily be liquefied. Number two is that ammonia, ammonia solution, or ammonia itself, can be used to treat insect bites. Or insect insect stinks. Many insects, when they stink, they introduce acid, methanic acid, into the body. Now, and that is what causes pain. What we do 
to remove the methanic acid from the body is to add ammonia solution. It will neutralize the stink. That is the acid introduced in the body as a result of the stink. So, and that will make the acid to be neutralized. It's also used domestically to neutralize acidic sweat from fabrics. And that is that applies to laundry matters. So it can it is used in laundry to remove acidic uh, acidic sweats from uh, fabrics. Ammonia is also used to remove temporary hardness from water. That's one use of it. And it is used industrially to produce certain chemicals. In chemical industries, it is used to, pro to produce fertilizers. It is used to produce, and that is ammonium based fertilizers, like ammonium tetrasulfate 6, ammonium trisulfate 5. It's also used to in the preparation in the production of plastics. It's also used in the production of many ammonium compounds that are of uh, commercial use. It's also used in the production of tri nitrate 5 acid, which we are going to look at very soon, maybe in the next class. Then ammonia is used as a precipitating agent for most metals. What do I mean? Metal ions in solution, when they come in contact with ammonium, ammonia solution, they form their hydroxide. And in most cases, the hydroxides are insoluble water, so the hydroxides are formed as precipitates. The color of the precipitate can be used to infer which metal ion is in that solution. And this is also used for qualitative analysis and sort analysis. For example, if you have a salt sample that you have dissolved in water, you want to know its, its content. If you add a few drops of ammonia solution to it and you obtain white precipitates, the salt, white gelatinous precipitates, the salt could contain any of the following ions. Zinc ion, aluminum ion, or lead ion. If ammonia solution is then added in excess, and the precipitate dissolves, we can conveniently confirm that the salt contains zinc ion. But if the precipitate does not dissolve, it could either be lead ion or ammonia or aluminum ion. So using ammonia solution, we can precipitate metal ion as the hydroxide from their salts. If we add ammonia solution in drops to a, to a solution and we get green gelatinous precipitate, we can conveniently say that that solution contains ion 2 ion. If you obtain uh, this uh, green precipitate will not dissolve in excess, excess ammonia solution. If you obtain brown precipitate which does not dissolve in excess ammonia solution, we can conveniently say that that, uh, that solution contains ion 3 ion. If you obtain blue precipitate which is soluble in excess solution to form a deep blue solution, we can conveniently confirm that that solution contains copper 2 ion. If you obtain um, no precipitate, it, this, the solution may contain calcium ion, sodium ion, ammonia ion, as a result of a similar uh, like, like uh, ions, no like ions do not react. So, I said because of this knowledge, so the ammonia solution is used in uh, salt analysis. Now, ammonium salts. That's why we are next. Or ammonium compounds. Ammonium salts are formed when ammonia neutralizes an, an acid. If all or parts 
of the hydrogen ion of an acid is replaced by an ammonium ion. Then the salt form is called an ammonium salt. All ammonium salts are soluble in water, so they are they can be prepared by neutralization. So there is no exception to that. And all ammonium salts are decomposed by heat. So when they are prepared, they are recovered by crystallization and not by evaporation to dryness. You have to take note of this as well. If you are asked to describe how ammonium tetrasulfate 6, for example, is prepared and recovered into the laboratory, one sure method is by passing ammonia gas into a solution of dilute tetraoxosulfate 6 acid. Concentration is complete. Then to recover the tetra ammonium tetraoxosulfate 6, then the, sol the, the sorting solution is subjected to crystallization. And what if I'm going to dryness, please take note of that. Now, what are their uses? Uses of ammonium salts. I'll just rush over the uses. Ammonium chloride is used in dry cell. You know that. Dry cell, like Lenche cell. You know ammonium chloride is one of the components. Ammonium chloride is also used in soda flux for welding. It's used for welding of metals. Ammonium trioxycarbonate 4, that we mentioned the other time. Ammonium NH4 to CO3 is used as a smelling salt in order to stimulate the heart, human heart. So if somebody smells it, the heart is stimulated. So it is used, it is useful, it, it has a medical use. Then ammonium translated 5 is, and as well as ammonium that was of its cyst that I mentioned the other that time. They are fertilizers. They are fertilizers. Then, ammonium trials 95 is also used in explosives. It's used as an explosive. So you have to take note of that. You can see that ammonia, ammonia and its compound has many uses. And that is where we are going to stop today's lesson. Check your portal. Make sure you do your assignment and submit as soon as you can. May Almighty Allah grant you understanding of your lessons. Bye. Assalamu alaikum.